All right, we're just going to do some examples in this section. So our first example, I want to find a family of curves. Now, when we talk about a family of curves, so curves are going to basically be an equation in x and y. And when we say family, there'll be some constant in there. So when you put different constant values in, you'll get different curves from the same equation. So the easiest uh, set of curves, family of curves, when you're constant, it's like plus c. So it's a shift up or a shift right c. But we've seen plenty already that the curves are not identical, meaning you can't just shift them up or down to get the next curve. Concentric circles is one that comes to mind. You don't just shift it over to get a different circle. You actually have to kind of scale them out. Uh, <clears throat> so we want to find a family of curves with a certain property here. So I want the segment of a tangent line Uh, drawn between points of tangency and the y-axis. is bisected by the x-axis. So this example is probably harder to understand than it is to solve. So we'll spend a little while thinking about what in the world I'm describing. So we're going to have some uh, curves uh, such that the segment of a tangent line draw between points of tangency and the y-axis. So we need an x and a y-axis. I'm just going to assume the curve is somewhere in the upper uh, right quadrant. So if we pick a point and we draw the tangent line, I'll switch to blue for that tangent line. So there's a tangent line. We're looking at the segment, the point of tangency, and the y-axis. So there's the point of tangency, and there's the point on the y-axis. And it says the midpoint is supposed to be on the x-axis. So is this curve going to satisfy the property that I want? No. Definitely not. So one way to fix it, it looks like I could have that same curve, but it needs to be in quadrant four down there if I'm going to have a chance at this. So that's not quite going to work out. So uh, this is not an example. So let's redraw. So if I have that same curve down here, this one probably won't be nicely to scale, but point of tangency y-axis, just pretend that that midpoint's actually on the x-axis. It's a little bit off, but <clears throat> this is one example of what we're working with. All right, so I need a curve. Let's label what these points are first. So what coordinates do I know about on the y-axis? It's got zero x. It's got zero for x. So I'm going to leave the y-coordinate blank for now. Actually, I'll just call it y. That'd be good enough. All right, the point on the curve, I'll label it as p. If this is a midpoint, well, first of all, what do I know about the point on the x-axis? So our y is 0. So given that this is a midpoint, the first height we got y, the second height is 0. What would be the height of p if it's actually a midpoint? Negative 
negative y. So we basically go up y, go down y. So we got negative y. I think it, all of us will be happier if I use y for the point and negative y for the y value that we intersect the y axis. So I'm just going to switch those two around. So let's think about x coordinates here. So if I call the point on the curve x, what would the midpoint's x coordinate be? x over 2. x over 2, so half of between 0 and x. All right, so we know about our three points here. So if I know, let's see, what's a good way? The slope. Yeah, we're definitely going to look at the slope. All right, so slope. I'm worried that if I uh, say that the curve, if the curve is uh, f of x equals y, I'm assuming at this point that we have a function of x which would mean uh, I already drew a curve that's not a function of x because it doesn't pass the vertical line test. Uh, so <clears throat> by writing this down, uh, I'm assuming that we have a function of x. So there is another way to write a curve. You could have an implicit solution. So we could have a function of x and y and equals 0. So basically, we just have a relationship between x and y. Now, from this curve, how do you find the slope? What's one way to write the slope? Derivative. Derivative. So how would I write that? You can't just write f prime, because f prime, uh, there's two variables. So I have to decide if it's a function of a variable derivative with respect to x or y. What would be the gradient? I could find the gradient, but that would be the run comma the rise. So uh, I could write the gradient out. So basically df would be dx dy. But what I really want, slope m is y prime, which is dy over dx. Really what I want is the slope. So we'll write it in that form. So that's our slope right there. So m is y prime. And let's write out, plus b. we'll write out the for, uh, equation of this line that I drew. So it'll be y equals mx plus b. What happens if I, for b, if I sub in negative y? Is y constant? No. Nope. So I'd be putting a, a y intercept in that's not constant. So that's not really what I want. Even though over here it says negative y. That's not really what I want. All right, so there's our line. Oh, no, that's exactly what we're about to do. Jeez. All right, so here's our slope is y prime, our y intercept is written on the graph, uh, 0 comma negative y. So I'm going to substitute in for m and for b now. So our slope is y prime x plus negative y. So let's collect our y's together. We have 2y equals y prime x. And this is just for the upper uh, point. Uh, what I'm doing now, I'm describing the relationship between x, y, and y prime of this paragraph. That's probably not a paragraph, this sentence right here. Okay, I'm just saying you chose negative y. You could have chosen 0 or y, right? I need Where the y right? intercept, so if I, ch if I chose 0, I I'd, I'd assume every line was hitting there, which would not describe our situation. So you really need to choose the y-coordinate of the y-intercept, not the x-coordinate. All right, can you solve for y? 
and it looks particularly easy. So see what you can do. Solve for y. You can of course write y prime as dy dx. It looks pretty easy. I think it's separable. So let's go the easy route. Go separable. If you have the option, separable is always the best usually. Exact is pretty a uh, pretty close second. Linear coefficients are the worst, and Bernoulli is probably the most useful. It's the most useful and really not that, it doesn't take that long to compute Bernoulli solutions. Is Bernoulli, you can use Bernoulli like almost every time. It's pretty much the most useful and one of the easier ones. So I, I'd like to go Bernoulli whenever possible, unless it's obviously separable or exact, in which case I just go right to separable or exact. Because even Bernoulli, you turn it into exact, so you're still going through exactness. You just have to do a little uh, kind of integrating factor type thing first. So we got ax squared equals y, and if you graph these out, they're all parabolas, they just have a different uh, vertical stretch, basically. So every one of these is going to be graphed like that, they'll have a different vertical stretch, but they'll all basically look just like this. And <coughs> let's see if this actually satisfies the original property. What I'm looking at, the original property, I want the actual written out English property. So think about parabolas. If we draw a point on the curve and then think about the tangent, do, does the tangent line intersect the x-axis halfway bet between where it would intersect the y-axis? So I'll draw a tangent line. It's kind of silly to think about the origin because everything is the exact same point, so it's kind of trivially the midpoint of the line segment from the point to itself. So that's kind of the degenerate case. So let's look at some point that's not right there. So that looks, I didn't really try to draw this too carefully to scale, but I think it's relatively believable that the tangent line, uh, the midpoint of the tangent line is the x-intercept uh, compared to the y-intercept. And you can pick a point a little higher up maybe over here to be a little bit steeper and you'll get something very similar over here where the midpoint, the x-intercept will be the midpoint of the line segment to the y-intercept. So our original little curve that we guessed was just wrong? I like it, still helped it, was, it was an example to allow me to draw out what was happening. Uh, the first one was a non-example because the midpoint was had no chance of being the x-intercept. I mean, what I was actually drawing would maybe the, if the midpoint of the tangent line segment was the point on the curve, and then the xy intercepts were the endpoints. So that would be a rephrased <coughs> version. And then where did that A come from? Uh, I took my constant. It, 
took my constant, uh, this is basically x squared times e to the c. So I just wrote that e to the c is a. I think we did that on probably like the very first example problem we did in class. All right, that was our first and last problem from 13. So there's, a, I think, one or two more problems in the book you can look at um, if you want some help before you do your homework. But I think these are more geometrical. We're going to look now at trajectories, and that's chapter or section 14. So are we usually going to uh, have to graph that as well? Um, I graphed it. So, I mean, the original question just said find family of curves with the property. So the family of curves is what I put a box around. And I probably should write a, I don't think I made any assumption on, s well, yeah, I think C can be anything. Uh, now, just because C is anything, one number A can never be a zero, but I think A can never be negative as well. So even though C uh, is any real number, E to the C is going to always be can't be zero, so it's always zero to infinity. So A isn't anything. A is any number, positive number, basically, because you can't get zero or negative out of that E to the C. So this is for any A. I'll just write any A greater than zero. I have a feeling it will work for negative A as well. But the solution that we arrived at only has positive A. So now we're going to jump to 15, 14, which is trajectories. And we'll start with the tricky definition. So this will be an isogonal trajectory. So first of all, trajectories are just flow lines, basically. So you have some gradient field or slope field, and you drop a leaf in there and watch where it goes. That path it's going to take is a trajectory. So you're just talking about one single curve in your solution set. Is another word for that's a trajectory. Uh, so tra trajectories are flow lines. They're usually we, we don't say flow lines if you're talking about like watching a projectile or throwing a frisbee or something like that. You would say it's the trajectory of this thing. You wouldn't say, oh, look at the flow line of <laughs> the baseball or something like that. Um, well, if you're playing baseball, they probably do that when they you know, the uh, statistical uh, data. There's probably somebody who analyzes baseball data who's ta who used the word flow lines, but I think most people will talk about project, uh, trajectories of projectiles or any object moving through a gradient field. Uh, so <coughs> a special type of uh, family of trajectories is called an uh, isogonal trajectory. So we'll have a definition. <coughs> I don't expect you to memorize this if I put uh, isogonal trajectory on your <coughs> quiz or midterm, I'll write the definition out too. It's a pretty tricky one. So this is a curve. Which intersects a family of one parameter curves. at the same angle is called an isogonal trajectory. So I'll draw the easiest example I can think of. 
The easiest example is uh, all of your curves, uh, your family of uh, curves are lines. So there'll be a bunch of parallel lines. I'll just do vertical lines, kind of boring. So we get a whole bunch of vertical lines. They're just different by basically their horizontal offset. What type of curve, I'll draw a curve in green. What type of curve would intersect every single line at the same angle? I can only think of one type of curve that would do that. Another line. Another line. That is not parallel with that one. That's not parallel. So it doesn't have to be perpendicular, but this, here's one example. Intersects everybody 90 degrees. But it doesn't have to. It can intersect everybody at whatever, 30 degrees or whatever that angle is. Does it even have to be a straight line? Oh, that's a good question. So if, if I had a parabola or any curve to it, you can already see any two adjacent are going to have slightly different angles. So in this example, there's only one choice. There's lots of lines, uh, but there needs to be a non-parallel line will intersect at the same angle. So this is kind of the easiest example. If your solution is a bunch of straight lines, it's probably a very easy differential equation. So it's not very exciting. So we'll look at a more exciting example next. Good. <laughs> I'm glad you like it. <laughs> Hopefully you like the next one too. Oh, <laughs> so what I'm going to do is describe the family of curves. And the family of curves will use the exact same one we had in the previous uh, example we computed. So I have graph paper here on purpose. So I'm going to draw a couple of different A values uh, somewhat carefully. I think uh, we'll start with a equals zero. That's a good good place to start. I want a little more precision. All right, here's my a equals zero uh, parabola. So when a is 0, you always get a y value of 0. So that's easy. Uh, let's do 1 half next. So 1 half, you go over, let's see. I'll say that this is 1 over 1, up a half. And then over 2, up. Over 2, up 2. Is that right? So that's one, two, up two. All right. Shouldn't that be negative one on the left side? Back and forth? Yep. Yeah. And the reason I'm being careful because I'm actually going to do my best to compare the actual angles that these curves intersect at. So I want my curves to be somewhat accurate, have an accurate slope. All right, so this is a equals 1 half. And then draw the a equals 1 curve. Do uh, a equals two as well. Obviously, that's going to be too high up to really. I'd have to rescale everything, but I'm just going to approximate it like that. So I think you get the idea of what all the curves look like. It's kind of. I guess you could think of almost like this infinite flower closing up or something like that. If you watch it animate over time, it would look like that. A is infinity. That would be the actual y-axis, but of course, infinity is not a number, so. You can get a super huge number, so you can get crazy steep parabola that almost looks vertical. So if a is like a million or a billion, it would almost look like a vertical line. So I'm not going to draw that. There we go. All right, what kind of curve, and do this in a different color, just think about what type of curve, actually I do want that super steep parabola that I just erased. So let's pretend a is like, I don't know, a thousand or something like that. You get some really tiny... Uh, it almost looks like a V right there. 
What kind of curve, and you also have to intersect the a equals zero parabola, what kind of curve would intersect these at the same angle? It's not gonna be a straight line for sure. Any straight line I try to draw, uh, if I do horizontal right away, well first of all I don't even intersect the horizontal line, but you can right away tell I've already failed the first two that I look at. So there's actually a couple of choices. So one of them is a vertical line. That's one possibility. So I will just highlight the y-axis. Look at that. We don't have the infinite parabola. We just have the super steep one. But even the super steep one, if I had a higher resolution picture, I could zoom in and it would look flat if I zoomed in far enough. All right, so we get y equals zero. No, x equals zero, wow. All right, but there's another type that's not a line. It's the upside down parabola. It'll look a lot like an upside down parabola, but we gotta be careful. Let's, let's use a, let's go up to two. Now I need a third color. Let's go purple. Pencil, not a pen. I want it. Actually, I'll just draw in pencil. All right, I want to include the two on the y-axis here. So I think we all have the idea that it's going to have to do some type of bending downwards, right? That's pretty obvious, right there. What angle would we have right here at the y-axis? So our slope would be flat, and our curve would be almost be vertical. So it would be 90 degrees perpendicular. Now if you look at this intersection, that looks pretty close to 90 degrees. And if I drew this more accurately, they would all be exactly basically 90 degrees right here. So what does that mean down here? 90 degrees. So what I drew is basically a parabola. So what I actually need is uh, either, maybe not necessarily a semicircle, but an ellipse. Because I don't know that it's necessarily going to be round. It may be a little more stretched out one or the other direction. So what it's actually going to be, a circle is one example of an ellipse. Uh, but I don't just want to assume it's a circle. Uh, so it's going to be an ellipse. And because my drawing is not that accurate, I can pretend like I was just drawing an ellipse from the beginning. And we can draw the ellipse on the other side as well. So it just has to have the property that it's actually vertical on the x-axis. So that you're still, you get that perpendicular, or 90 degrees. Now when A is negative, you can take this and flip it upside down. So you get the exact same picture um, in the bottom. So I'm just going to really quickly draw the curves upside down. And then the I'll redraw that purple line as well. I'm not trying to be super accurate here. That last one was pretty bad, but you get you under, you know what I mean, hopefully. So it's the same just mirror image. All right. <coughs> How in the world are we going to find out if this is a ellipse, a circle, or something that just vaguely looks like an ellipse or a circle? So we need to start writing out some equations to relate things. They all have to be uh, going on. Well, I guess what I'm thinking is they all have to be kind of like symmetrical on each side. Just for example, you can have sign. Yeah, but if you think, if I try to put any type of a sign graph on here, uh, I'm going to have to worry about all these intersections here and the intersections up there, and I can already tell that they're not the same angle. Uh, there's no way that this could be a sign or a cosine graph. Uh, the only way that, that would happen is if I had some weird wavy kind of family of curves that had 
some kind of complementary wave to the sine wave. There'll be some weird, I don't know, they'd have to, they'd have to kind of line up like train tracks right there. Probably the best way to describe it. You're like making a, I don't know, a series of chicanes for a train or something like that. And then they'd, they'd also have to exist other places, so they'd have to, I don't know, do some weird flowy thing like that. So we wouldn't have to do that. No, it's going to look very much like an ellipse. I made another very big assumption. What's the other assumption I made with this blue, uh, this purple curve? I assumed I pretty much knew where it was going to intersect the y-axis, which I really don't know where it's going to intersect the y-axis. Uh, I know it's going to intersect the x-axis twice, and it's going to be, however far we go to the right, we'll go to the left that much. Like this has symmetry to it. But other than that, I don't know exactly where it's going to hit the axis. All right, so we're going to have two different y variables, unfortunately. So I'm going to rename some of my variables here. I'm going to let y1 equal ax squared, and that's the original family. Because we're going to... Oh, yeah, we're going to get right <laughs> Yeah, it's also on the cover of the book. <laughs> yep. Uh, and I think we'll actually get a family of ellipses, which I shouldn't spoil it, but basically your different radius, you can have, I think it just has to be a positive radius. So I could have drawn this ellipse twice as big, like a scaled version. It doesn't have to be this size. Yes, sir? Also, um, this is you got your textbook. <laughs> so I, I'm pretty sure it's the next chapter, the next bunch of sections. Okay. Uh, you can look ahead if you want. You can always read further ahead than I am. Okay. I just remember in part one, I think you Hopefully changed the other so we can catch up with our other classes too. Yeah, I'm not sure that differential equations is a prerequisite for that engineering class. I don't know. Look at the course outline and see if it's a prerequisite. Okay. And if it is, let me know, and I'll try to reorder stuff in the future, which won't help you. But it'll help you, the future you, a year from now. All right, so... We're basically going to be describing two different curves, one of which is the cur the parabolas, and the other curve I'm going to be describing is the ellipse. So I can't use the same x and y for both. So I'm going to use uh, y1 uh, for the parabolas, and I'll use regular y for the ellipse we're trying to find. Oh, I also assumed we had a we're looking for the pi over 2 or the uh, perpendicular isogonal trajectories. Isogonal word in there too. So we have our original family, and now I'm going to look at that property that I need the uh, angles basically to be perpendicular. So our slope is y1 prime, and the derivative of y1 is super easy that's 2ax. Y1 prime, yeah. I'm drawing my prime crooked on purpose. Otherwise it would look like, we used to call that the crack pipe on the keyboard. I think it's called the vertical bar now. Well, semicolon, they're little circles. The vertical bar, it's more like a full bar. Anyways, I don't wanna, that's not what I'm drawing. And so our, basically our Y, So 
So let's zoom in on one of these in particular. I will just pick. No, that's not what I want. I'm just going to arbitrarily pick that intersection point right here to look at more closely. So I can draw the, basically a big version of both of these. So we're going to zoom in on that. intersect and now there's two slopes and there's that slope which probably keep the colors consistent oh no the curve just vanished That line there, the other curve. Whoa. And we have an angle in between, and it's a right angle, so I just drew it with the right angle marker. All right, we got two different slopes on two different lines. The one in the parabola is using I think that'll be y1 prime x plus b. Is that right? Our slope is y1 prime. That, so that's the slope of our parabola at the point right there. How does that slope, how do I turn that slope into a perpendicular slope to get the purple slope? Got to go way back to, I think, algebra 1, probably. It's a negative inverse, uh, it's a reciprocal, the inverse multiplication, the multiplicative inverse, of the negative multiplicative inverse of this slope. So the other one's going to be y equals negative 1 over y1 prime. Now that looks totally that's what I was trying to avoid. Negative y1 prime x. It does not have the same y-intercept, so I think I'll just call the original y-intercept b1, and then this second y-intercept would just be b. very tempted to set y equal to y and then I think we'll have a differential equation in y1 and x and the b's will just be some constants. That's probably a good idea too. I can do that, 2ax. Let's do that instead. So we got y equals 2axx or 2ax squared plus b1. And then the other equation, uh, we will have negative 1 over 2ax times x plus b, which of course reduces to negative 1 over 2a plus b. Oh, we got rid of our differential part, though. It makes me a little nervous, but maybe we'll be okay. All right, so I'm not really sure exactly what to do next. But we will eventually figure out that this is an ellipse, centered at the origin, obviously. So it's probably a good place to end, and then I'll figure out how to finish this problem.
and you guys get an extra few minutes to study.